Hello guys, welcome to my channel. This is Pfizer and if you are new to this um, channel, um, please consider subscribing and please hit the notification bell so that you will be notified of my upcoming videos. For this uh, tutorial, I'm going to give you some insights on how are you going to write your research proposal. If you are a student enrolled in research, it is a must that before writing the entire uh, paper, of your research you are required to submit a, a research proposal now why do we need to have or why do we need to submit such proposals the, your research proposal will communicate the details of your research so if you will be uh, presenting your proposal you will be uh, giving your audience or your panel members or your teacher uh, answers to the following questions number one uh, what are you trying to investigate? What are you trying to find out, determine, or discover? Who are the respondents or subjects of the study? And where is the research local setting or the place where the research study will be conducted? You will convince your reader to approve or agree with what you are going to propose. So really, your purpose in uh, having your a research proposal is to uh, convince your uh, readers or your panel members that uh, the study that you are uh, proposing or the research that you will be conducting will be of great importance. Now, what are the essential points of a research proposal? Number one, the focus of the research is clear and well-defined. So just like what I've said earlier, um, your proposal should answer the who, the what, and the where uh, questions. So what are you trying to investigate? What are you trying to find out, determine, or discover? Who will be your respondents? And um, where is the research local or setting or the place where you're going to conduct your research? So it should be stated uh, clearly in your uh, proposal. Your research uh, should be well justified, it is unique, and it is worthwhile. So in writing research, we're actually uh, doing uh, either of these two things. First, uh, it's contributing new to the body of knowledge, or we are innovating uh, something that has already been done. Number three, uh, in, an important consideration is the research should be achievable and doable. Students, we are given only a time frame in which we're going to uh, conduct and to conduct our research and uh, present it to your panel members so see to it that um, your proposal can be achieved and can be done with that span of uh, time now what is the anatomy of a research proposal so if you will be uh, creating or submitting a proposal to your advisor or or to your a research professor this uh, is the anatomy of a research proposal so number one of course you should have your provisional title now I say that it is a provisional title since uh, during the process there might be some slight changes in your title so uh, later on after the after your title defense uh, your panel members will be giving you some uh, suggestions in improving your title so for the meantime you should come up with a provisional title now your title should be reflective of its problem number two is the introduction and the research question introduction and research question so it is important that in a research proposal you should have a an introduction and uh, your research question. Now, in addition, um, you should come up also with your research objective and research questions. Now, for research objective, you can have a one major uh, objective and at least two or three specific objectives. Now, example of a research objective, say, for example, um, 
you want to identify the key factors that influence higher education, higher educational institutions in, in adapting mobile learning, and how these factors affect faculty and, member, and students. If you notice, out from your research objective, you could actually formulate there your research question. Taking the given a research objective, we can formulate here two questions. Number one, what are the factors that influence HEIs in adapting mobile learning and how do these factors affect faculty and students? So we can actually derive your research questions from the research objective. Number three is literature review. Now, what is the purpose of literature review? If you will be conducting research to see to it that, that you have already read uh, literatures concerning the study that you are proposing, you have to prove to your audience or, or to your panel members uh, that you know something about the existing research. So one way of, one of the reasons why we do literature review, find out uh, to know what has been done and what has not been done. So we will concentrate on the things that has not been done. Of course, we do literature research, uh, we do literature review in order to reveal the gap in the existing research. So this is actually the most critical part of uh, creating your research proposal because you really need to uh, dig deeper into the literature so that you can reveal and find the gap in the existing research. Now the gap here uh, usually are the things uh, which other researchers were not able to do. So in that case, as a future researcher, this is where you're going to start your research. Normally, uh, the gap usually is your, uh, you can actually base your title from uh, the research gap. Your literature review also will show you your research design. So the research design, uh, how are you going to uh, solve or how are you going to, or what is your solution to the proposed problem and how are you going to do it? So these are the essentials in a research design. So number one, sampling. So who will be your uh, respondents? Of course, your methodology. Usually the methodology discusses the research local, the research design, the population sampling, or respondents of the study, as well as the research instrument uh, that you're going to use, and if you will be uh, using statistical treatment of data. Okay, so for the research local, uh, this will discuss the place or setting of the study. It will describe a brief of the place where the study will be conducted. So only important features uh, which have the bearing on the present study are included. And in the research local, um, we are going to show here the target, your target population. For the research design, the research design describes the research mode, whether it is a true experimental or a quasi-experimental design, descriptive or a survey research, historical research, qualitative research, or et ethnographic and others. Okay, So you should be able to uh, show your, your panel members what uh, type of design, research design, are you going to use in your study? The population sampling or respondents of the study describes the target population of the, of the sample frame. So it will specify the sampling technique used and how the sample size is determined. Research instrument, this will explain the specific type of research instrument such as the questionnaire, checklist, the questionnaire checklist, a structured interview, uh, standardized instrument which are adapted or borrowed with permission from the other author or other sources. Establishment of validity and reliability should be explained and only ex experts should be chosen to validate such instrument. So a specific and appropriate uh, statistical tests used should be given and the computed values derived. Interpretation should be included in the discussion. So for the research uh, instrument or the questionnaire, if you will be adapting uh, questionnaires from the other uh, research, uh, from other researchers or from other study, you should uh, 
make sure that you have permission from the author and see to it that it's, it is uh, properly cited in your paper. Now, in cases you're going to um, amend some parts of the research questionnaire, that's the time that you have to validate your, that, that's the time that you have to have your uh, questionnaire validated by an expert. Statistical treatment of data, in cases wherein you're going to analyze your data, you need to analyze your data, you have to explain how each statistical test is used in, a, in, uh, in, in the treatment of data. So if, in case, the research instrument included options which are scaled, explain how each scale is given the weight, its interval and its plots, and its uh, class limits. So there are cases wherein you need to uh, have any statistician to uh, check your uh, data if they need to be uh, analyzed by a simple or if they need to be analyzed by an statistical treatment. Reference list, a software that you can use in writing your paper. Especially in in doing the referencing. So this is the website for the APA's uh, six refer the sixth version of APA referencing style guide. So this website will give you a guideline on how we're going to uh, reference all your resources that you use in your uh, study. Okay. So this is the APA format. So you'll find here examples on, on how are you going to reference if it is one author, multiple authors, two or three authors. Uh, likewise, examples on how are you going to uh, do citations. Okay. So aside from this, you all, we also have um, IEEE uh, citation style is used for electronics, engineering, telecommunications, computer science, and information technology reports. So in here, uh, it also gives you the sample uh, referencing uh, style and citation. Okay. So for engineering, usually this is the type of uh, style. This is the style of how are you going to reference or cite your resources. All right. So if you notice, this is actually different from uh, the APA style. All right. Now the other parts would be the a project plan or Gantt chart. So the Gantt chart will uh, give uh, the, your readers or your panel members a overview of the project plan on how are you going to do it. Uh, this actually the Gantt chart actually will show the schedules for each task that you're going to do in your uh, proposal or in your study, okay? You may also include your resource plan. So where are you going to get your resources in case uh, you will be needing them? The risk management and your ethical compliance requirements. So it depends on the institution that you will be uh, submitting your paper. Uh, you have to comply with the ethical compliance uh, requirements. So important notes before we end. Number one, so you have to be familiar with your literature. Okay. So it is important that before, uh, supposedly before uh, proposing a title, you should have at least read the literature. Okay. So it's only when we, we read the literature that we are going to 
have an idea if what we are proposing uh, has already been done or what is the gap uh, in the literature okay you have uh, don't rush number two is don't rush the process uh, we should always take time especially in uh, reading the literature okay so that we we will be coming up with a study which is worth doing which is unique and has a potential for uh, publication in the future okay and of course you have to polish our manuscript okay so we have to check the format of um, the research that we are doing usually the schools provide uh, the students with the format uh, that you're going to use in the in writing your manuscript so see to it that before you submit your proposal to your uh, research professor or to your panel members see to it that it is already polished meaning to say you have already included all the parts especially if they have given you a template to accomplish okay so that's all guys for uh, writing your uh, research proposal looking forward that you have come up with that you will be coming up with a good uh, research proposal